Madden Football brings you the divisional round of the NFL playoffs and is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Seahawks and the Vikings, and it's all up next. It seems like only yesterday we were here for Super Bowl 52 and now back for the road to the Super Bowl here in the Twin Cities at U.S. Bank Stadium. Coming up, we've got an ultra-important divisional round matchup in the NFC as it'll be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Hello, everyone. As the postseason continues here on EA Sports, we're pleased to bring it to you. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And who has the edge here? You got one side that had some extra rest, but another comes in off a win last week in the wild card round. And it's funny, depending on which team you are, you say that that's an advantage. You'll take the rest. You'll take the week off. Get your guys healed up a little bit and ready to go. But that team that's coming in off of a win... of four births in the conference championships on the line here as divisional weekend in the NFL is underway. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. And he and his team, they were the beneficiaries of a first-round buy earned by a tremendous regular season. He'd been a little bit nicked up so he could use the rest, and I'm sure his teammates felt the exact same way. But now it'll be interesting to watch their first few drives in this one because sometimes getting the rest is great, but sometimes you accumulate a little bit of rust as well. Maybe they come out flat, and they can't afford that in the postseason. They'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. Throwing his cousins. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. So now an early third and 10 here on their opening drive. Cousins to throw it. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Now here's Ryan right now as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Now it's Lockett. And eight yard return there after a punt of 47. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And they're led out by their mobile quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. And he more than did his part in the wild card win with three touchdown passes. Now, he's going to get a bigger test here in round two. But his unit is in rhythm, and they're playing as well as they have all year long. I wouldn't be surprised if this defense, though, tried to get after him early with a little extra pressure. If he can handle that, he can have another big game, though. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Smith. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Now a second and ten. Smith. Throwing left side right there. But it's incomplete. And that's an object game from being in this league for a long time. He's only going to wonder when to get up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Throwing on third down, Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 22-yard line. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Rush coming, and he's taken down. 
credit that sack to Marcus Davenport. Now defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Now Smith. Oh, this will be incomplete. Rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. Myers' kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Tariq Woolen picks it, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. After the interception, here's Smith. That's complete to DK Metcalf. Fights through it. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, 36 yards. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. But not only, Charles, did he beat double coverage to make the catch, and then as soon as he did, locked his gaze upfield and made sure to reach the end zone. Go grab your dictionary, partner. Jason Look Meyer up determination, and his picture is going to pop right up. How about him getting through multiple defenders, finding his way through coverage, and making sure he got to the end zone? That's a big-time play right there. Myers connects on the PAT, and the lead grows to 10-0. Jason so an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They trail here early in this division round game as they seek a spot in the NFC title bout. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Here's a give to Madison running right. Pushes past him, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Two yards, good enough for a first. To throw is Cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. On third down, Cousins. And that one goes incomplete on the drive. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. 
Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and two. On second down, it's Walker. Room here to run. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That good for 22 and a first down. And when you get into the divisional round of the playoffs, this is where having the ability to run the football is such an advantage. The defenses, they're generally going to be tougher the further you go along. So if you can get something established up front, it's going to give you a great chance to move on. Back to Walker on first down. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. And going right back to Walker. Had a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Geno to out of throw. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down in the yard. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Four yards the pickup. First down. Walker now on first and 10. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Second down and six now. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Smith now to throw. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Kenneth Walker, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks are able to widen their advantage. Well, we know he can run the ball. There he shows he has the ability to do a little bit more. That's what you call a complete player. A guy who can run it, catch it, probably can protect the passer when necessary, but his skills are best used when you get the ball in his hands. And that's the thing. When you've got an athlete like that, you want to get the ball to him in multiple ways, right? Without a doubt, because he often creates mismatches about who can cover him, whether he's coming out of the backfield or even lining up like a receiver. On the return is Brandon Powell. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And now out comes Minnesota. And you work so hard during the regular season to earn that bye to go to the divisional round fresh. Well, maybe they're too fresh because they've come out here pretty flat. And how many times have we seen it? And let's go to other sports now. Let's go to basketball, baseball, those ones where the playoffs are a series. And you see teams who were playing before, versus the team that had the bye, and they take them on, and how many often does that team that had been playing before win game one? Right. Almost always, right? Feels that way anyway. But it's a one-shot deal like the NFL, that's critical because now you come in and you've got the momentum, you can take them out in that one game, and it's over. And those other ones, that team at home usually gets a chance to recover, and they're usually the better team. Well, they better halt that momentum on the other side quickly, or this might be their last game. 
So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll go Madison up the middle. He stiff arms him. And this will be a Vikings first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. As they've got it, second down and 11. Throwing, Cousins. Throw to the right, hauled in by Addison. So eight yards on the completion there. And now we've got a third down and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. Ochenna Nuosu coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They have not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes and they're getting out of it. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. Despite some tough running, he's still wrangled down shy of the 15. Byron Jones in there to make the tackle. On second down, here's Smith. It's caught, Lockett. And Lockett going to pick up a Seahawks first down as the tackle made at the 22. On first down, it's Smith. That's to the tight end, Colby Parkinson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. First catch for him in these playoffs. He was held without one last week, but he's got a first down on that effort. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Up the middle, here's Walker. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Smith. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So on trots the field goal unit. And wow, this is going to be a challenge here. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. Well, Charles, the NFL record is 66 yards. That was five shy of that, but only a handful of guys have ever connected 
from 61 or deeper, and he can add his name to the list. Yeah, more and more guys are trying it. That doesn't mean the success rate has gone up. That is a long kick. Guaranteed, when he turns on his phone after the game, a ton of congratulatory texts will be awaiting him. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They've got to be a little shell-shocked. Down double digits at home in the playoffs. Still in the first half. They've got to turn things around quickly. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Cousins and the throw here caught by Addison. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First down, here's Cousins. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. These guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. On first and 10, Cousins. His throw incomplete. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now Cousins' throw going to be pulled in by Addison. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty All ensues. Offense. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. After the false start, sets up a third and nine. Right now, let's go get six. Again, it's Cousins. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 15-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. From the red zone now, Cousins. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Second down, Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long, and this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Bobby Wagner, multiple times in All-Pro, in there to drop him for a loss. Here's Randy Bullock now as he'll go for the field goal. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Bullock's kick is good, and that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, Bobby, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Straight ahead, Walker. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The speed of Jordan Hicks on display there as he gets the tackle for loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Now Smith. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. They'll be dropped shy of the 40 despite powering through the tackle. 
They'll come up now, third and nine. Now it's Smith. And this is going to be incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Cousins in step with Jefferson that time. First down, Vikings. Second quarter action, two minutes to go on divisional round weekend. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throw left side, and Osborne has it. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. They'll throw again. Cousins throwing the out route incomplete. It's Osborne. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On third and one, here's Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. Meanwhile, Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. First and 10 here. You know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Here's second and 10. Now Cousins. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. On third down, Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And a good job defensively. They stopped him short of the first at the 32. Bullock's kick is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Here's Smith. This one goes underneath to Walker. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. And they'll get him down. He's inside the 40. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And that is no good. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. This, the first of four Divisional Round matchups coming up this weekend. 
We'll get back out to you guys in just a moment. But first, let's take a look ahead to tomorrow's other divisional round game in the NFC. And it looks like we've got a good one in store. And it's going to be one heck of a battle, that's for sure. All right, Coach, thank you. We welcome everyone back for quarter number three. A trip to the NFC title game hanging in the balance. Second half action back underway. This taken in right around the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. And they've been the better of the two teams through two quarters of play, much to the chagrin of this home crowd. Yeah, this score is a surprise to a lot of folks at home, although not to my dad. He predicted the visitors would win. And maybe to the folks in the stadium, but you know who is not a surprise to, partner? This team with the football. They were very confident coming in. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Throwing is Smith. Oh, he'll let that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Smith. This complete to Lockett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Now Gino on first down. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Smith throwing again. He's got Thompson here, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First catch for him in these playoffs. He was held without one last week, but he's got a first down on that effort. On the handoff, this is Walker. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Throwing now is Geno. And he is caught. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 30. 23 yards on the play. Press coverage on the outside. And for defenders, that's the ultimate risk reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Now Gino. Out right to Smith and Jigba. And out of bounds right around the 20. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. From the red zone now, Smith. That's caught over the middle by Fan. And the Seahawks are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Walker will take this into the end zone for a Seahawk touchdown. Well, after their wild card round game last week, you and I said, well, they played pretty well. Maybe they got a shot at keeping this one close. They've done more than keep this one close. Yeah, they've made quite a statement, haven't they? And I don't know if it was the week off that hurt this defense, but they've been flat from the get-go, and that's always a coach's fear. Okay, you earn the open week, but you wonder how they'll respond with that extra time off. Yeah, it seems like they've been running uphill all game. 
Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. From the end zone, here comes Brandon Powell. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 16. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Cousins. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Yeah, we will get another look at Seattle's offense. They're just looking for more of the same. Great first half so far. Good second half. And you know, sometimes, I guess, maybe, Charles, these coaches, they don't have to tell these guys much when they're rolling like they're rolling right now. You're exactly right. I've heard story. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Now Cousins, throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. It's second and inches at the 32-yard line. Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as the tackle is made right at the 25-yard line. Here's Madison running on first down. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Second down, Cousins. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. Cousins from the gun on third. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. Uh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. Randy Bullock on for the field goal. A 52-yard attempt. Bullock's kick is good, and the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So that one is his third of the game. If you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six field goals. Six? Let's hope we don't get that again, please. <laughs> Can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. 
Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Now Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. Two catches now in this divisional round matchup. That one, a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. On first down, it's Smith. He finds Smith and Jigba. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the 40-yard line. They'll toss this out right to Walker. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Give him a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. Now Smith. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. And Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 17 more yards. They had 17 on the previous snap as well. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Smith on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Smith with a throw caught by Metcalf. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 17-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Again, Smith completes it to Fant on the right side. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Ball at the eight here for second and a yard, maybe a touch less. A shotgun snap for Smith. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Seahawks continue to pull the playoff surprise as they lead big here on the road. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it. Pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. And they'll start at the 25 as Powell decides against returning it. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. 
On the handoff, it's Madison. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Credit the tackle there to Uchenna Nuwosu. One quarter remains for a trip to the NFC title game. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. And he'll only get this to about the 35, well short of the line to gain. They'll get a couple of yards on the keeper, but it's going to lead to a fourth down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. DK Metcalf of the Seattle offense about set to take over once again. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the offense. And I love the accumulation. The catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They run again with Walker. They'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The offense on third down tonight. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. They're looking at third and a few inches. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. 78 yards on the ground for him so far. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. They'll try the air now with Smith. Catch is made by Metcalf. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. 23 yards, the final tally. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game, moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, touchdown, Seahawks! Jackson Smith and Jigba from six yards away. And the Seahawks are moving closer to a date now in the NFC Championship game as they're able to extend this fourth quarter lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. And certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up the secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Myers connects on the PAT. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Powell now to take it out of the end zone. 
And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And this one not officially in the bag, but it's looking more and more like you and I are going to be in these same seats next week for a game to go to the Super Bowl. And it's contrary to our meeting with the, with the visitors, wasn't it? Remember when we went over to their hotel before the game, and one of the themes that kept hitting us with was, let's put the pressure on the number one seed and see if they can handle it. Let's, let's do that. Well, they're the number one seed for a reason. Best team all year long. They're showing it again in this game. Throwing Cousins. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, CD, that helps the home team as they try to erase this deficit, give them the penalty for pass interference on the defense. Yeah, and they certainly haven't been happy with what they've seen so far, have they? They're certainly hoping that that call now might get the fans back into this one. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Second and one at the 44-yard line. From the gun, here's Cousins. Looks again for T.J. Hawkinson, and he's got him again. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he'll be brought down at the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Cousins now. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down to about the 21 or 22. Second down and three. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. Now Cousins. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. On the toss, Madison. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Second and goal from inside the five. Madison. Going to take this down just short of the goal line. He got three, but could not get the ball over the chalk. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. They'll try to run with Madison. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Alexander Madison punching it in from a yard away. And the Vikings are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And that will cut this lead down to 25. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They have all but booked their ticket to the NFC Championship game next weekend, and they'll look to finish things off here now in this fourth quarter. And he powers his way up past the 30. From the 31, here's a second and five. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And it's third down. Smith on third down. 
Throw out wide to Walker. And this won't be enough. Stopped a yard short after a gain of three. Fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. It'll be a 48-yard punt. Five there on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and ten. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Their hopes of advancing past this divisional round, hanging by a threat, if that, as they begin here with a first and ten on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Over the middle and complete to Addison. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Here's Cousins. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Cousins on first down. Addison hauls it in. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. To the air again, it's Cousins. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake, third down. Cousins. Well, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And the Seahawks are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. A gear for Walker running right. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 47. And Dominican Sue unblockable there as he got in there to make the stop behind the line. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Sticking with Walker on second down. And no luck at all to start this drive as they're going to drop him behind the line for a second straight play. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. both sides you come into this game with so much hope so much build up looking to move on one side gets to do that but let's not forget the others tough pill to swallow it really is because it's so much hard work effort you mentioned the hope to go on and maybe play in the big game itself well let's see how they handle it though the offseason is going to be a long one for them because it's going to eat their heart out watching other people continue to play but can they come back the next year and find it in them to make that same run again and maybe find a way to advance? That'll do it for us.